there, my name is Jess and I'm the designer behind Sally Tomato. Join me to make the Mason bag. I designed this pattern in two sizes. It's perfect to use as a toiletry bag, project bag, snack bag, and more. In this video, I'll take you step by step to make the entire project. You can make the project out of quilt weight cotton, canvas, or even pro light cork fabric. You'll learn how to stabilize your fabrics with foam interfacing, how to install a zipper, how to make grab tabs, and you'll learn how to install a lining without any bias binding or a drop-in lining method. Included in this online class is the full video tutorial. Grab your supplies and let's get started. In this video tutorial, I'll take you step by step to make the mason bag from start to finish. In this video, I'm going to be making the mini version, but you could also make the full version. The instructions will be the same for either size, just the measurements of the pattern pieces will be a little bit different. For my exterior fabric, I chose to use Pro Light cork fabric, and this is a very thin cork, so it'll be easy to sew through. If you use a cork fabric that's thicker than this, it might cause you some issues with your sewing machine. Um, it being too thick going around some of these corners. So I'd recommend to go with the Pro Light cork fabric. It's still the quality cork on a thinner backing. It, so it holds up really well and it's going to look super professional when we're done. You could also choose to use a quilt weight cotton, canvas, denim, linen, or any other fabric similar to that. So the first step in the instructions is to attach the foam interfacing to the coordinating pieces. So we're going to be attaching the foam to the exterior main panels and we should have two of those. And then also the exterior base. And the foam is going to add some body to our bag and help it keep its shape. And what I love about sewing with foam is it compresses as you sew. And also, if it gets crumpled up, then it pops right back into shape. And if your bag gets wrinkled at all, you can always just steam the fabric and the foam and it will relax and it will get all those wrinkles out. So you're going to want to place your panels with the right side of your fabric face up against the foam. And since I'm using cork fabric, I'm not going to want to pin these in place. If you're using cotton or canvas or any of those types of materials, you can definitely use pins to hold them to the foam. Otherwise, you could use a temporary basting spray. And you can just spray the wrong side of each of your pieces and then stick it down to the foam. So for this project, I recommend using a sew-in foam. Some foams out there have um, fusible on one side or even both sides. And you could use a one-sided fusible for this project and then fuse your pieces to it. But usually when you use a foam that has a fusible, when you turn your bag right side out, those wrinkles are more difficult to get out. So that's why I always stick with a sew-in foam. So what we're going to do is you're going to top stitch around the outer edges of all three pieces with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you're just going to be sewing one eighth inch in around all of the side edges of all three pieces. And that will just attach it to the foam. So the purpose of this step is just to attach each piece to the foam. And we can lengthen our stitch length to five millimeters long since we're just tacking it down having the longer stitch length will just help this process go a little bit faster and the purpose is just to hold them together so let's get started I'm sewing on a baby lock accomplish I love this machine for bag making it's a straight stitch only machine so like in its name the only stitch that it does is a straight stitch but since it only does one stitch, it's really good at what it does. It's a super powerful machine, it's great for sewing through thickness, and that's why I love it for bag making. I have
have a narrow foot on my machine, so I'm just going to follow the edge of the foot for my eighth inch seam allowance. Next, you're going to take a sharp pair of scissors and you're going to trim close to all the outer edges of your fabric and trim away that excess foam. Once all your pieces are cut out, we're ready to move on to the next step. Next, we need to attach the zipper tabs onto the zipper. If you're using cotton or canvas, anything other than the Pro Light cork fabric, you're going to want to fuse interfacing to the wrong side of each of the tabs. So, like I mentioned before, I'm using cork, so this material doesn't need any additional interfacing on the back side. If you're using zipper by the yard, you can make a zipper for your project that has either a single or a double slide zipper. So a double slide zipper would have two zipper pulls on it that meet in the middle and then open outwards. But for my project, I'm just going to use a single zipper pull. And I am using Sally Tomato Zipper by the Yard. Our zippers have a nylon coil with a metallic finish, so they're plastic and you can sew right over the teeth but they look like metal. So I think this is a really fun zipper to use. Um, the actual pull is metal, so you'll have to watch out. You don't want to sew over the pull, but it's safe to sew over the coil and cut through the coil. So it's just fun to add another professional element to your project. So I've already prepared my zipper, and if you are using Zipper by the Yard, I have lots of tutorials on our YouTube channel on how to get the pulls on the tape and how to make different lengths of zipper. So my zipper is already prepared. If you are using zipper by the yard, I do recommend to stitch over each raw end of the coil a few times. So just forward stitch and backward stitch and that'll help prevent your pull from coming off. So if you move your zipper pull around, then you just having that stitching on the ends will prevent your pull from sliding off the end. So it's just helpful to have that for reinforcement. So after your zipper is prepared and your zipper tabs are prepared, you're going to take one of your tabs and have the right side face up. You'll have the right side of your zipper face up as well. So the right side of your zipper has the pull and the coil. See the wrong side has the stitching. So have the right sides face up and you're going to place the one zipper tab against the wrong side of your zipper. And you're going to line up the side edges and the short ends. Then you're going to take another tab and you're going to place it right side down against the right side of the zipper. So basically your fabrics are going to be right sides together and you're sandwiching the zipper in between each of the tabs. So I'm going to use a wonder clip to hold this together and you're going to sew across the short end with a half inch seam allowance and you'll repeat for the opposite side. So before we begin sewing, make sure that your stitch length is turned to two and a half millimeters. Since we were doing our basting stitch before, we want a shorter stitch length to make sure that we hold the fabric in place now. And this is a half inch seam allowance if you're wondering where a half inch seam allowance is, either you can measure it with your ruler and mark it, you could use a seam guide, or on the needle plate of most sewing machines is a half inch guideline, so you can just follow your fabric along that guide on the needle plate. And make sure to backstitch and sew slowly over the zipper. It is nylon, so it is safe to sew over, but you never know when you're going to break a needle, so just make sure that you sew slowly.
So after you have the tab stitched down, you're going to fold both of the tabs away from the zipper. So now your tabs should be wrong sides together. And you're going to top stitch a quarter inch away from that seam. And for your top stitching, you can lengthen your stitch length to three and a half, and it will just look a little bit more decorative and be a bit more defined of a stitch. And then you repeat for the opposite side. Take one of your exterior main panel pieces and have it right side up and take your prepared zipper with the zipper tabs attached and you're going to place the zipper right sides together with the main panel. So make sure that your zipper pull tab is face down out of the way and you're going to line up the side edges and the top straight edge and use wonder clips to hold the layers together. Then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to baste the zipper in place along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and you can change your stitch length to 5 millimeters again since we're just going to baste it in place. And for this step you might want to change over to a zipper foot so that'll help you maintain your seam allowance. I'm just going to continue using my narrow foot that came with my machine. And one notion that I love to use for bag making is a stiletto and this helps you hold your material in place as you sew. So it has a sharp point on it so you can adjust your material if you need to and even just push down and it'll act kind of like a pin to help hold your material in place. So when you reach the zipper pull, you might have to slide it out of the way if you're not using a zipper foot or a narrow foot, but I'm just going to slide mine out of the way just as a precaution, and I'm going to actually lift up the foot and slide it past so where I've already stitched so it's completely out of the way for when I'm sewing ahead. Now take one of your lining pieces and you're going to place it right sides together with your main exterior fabric piece. And you're going to line up all the edges and you're going to clip along the top edge. Then we'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew along the top edge with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So that will encase our zipper and cover up that basting stitch that we did before. So remember for all of our piecing we want to use two and a half millimeter stitch length so be sure to change that back on your machine. So here's what our project should look like so far. Next we're going to trim away as much foam as possible just from the seam allowance and that will help reduce a little bit of bulk. And it's okay if you trim away some of the fabric as well, just be careful not to cut through your stitching. So I'm just going to trim away about an eighth of an inch and shave off as much foam as I can. Then you're going to fold away the lining and your exterior fabric away from the zipper. So the zipper will be on the top and your fabrics will be wrong sides together. Then you're going to top stitch along this seam with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you're going to be stitching a quarter of an inch away from the seam that we just made. And remember for all of your top stitching you'll want to increase it to three and a half millimeters so it's a little bit more of a defined stitch.
So here's what our project is looking like so far. Now we're going to repeat the exact same steps to attach the opposite exterior panel and the opposite lining panel to that raw edge of the zipper. Take both of your grab tab pieces. Again, if you're using any other material besides Pro Light cork, you're going to want to fuse interfacing to the wrong side of each grab tab piece. So that'll help add a little bit more of support. But I'm using the cork, so my pieces are ready to go. So first you're going to start out by folding both of the short edges to the center so they meet in the middle. So now your piece should be a two inch square. Then you're going to fold the opposite raw edges so that way they meet. And you can just finger press this or press this over at your iron. And then I'm going to use some wonder clips to just hold the fold together for now. So that's one grab tab prepared. And now we'll do the same for the other grab tab. And you're going to center the raw edges of one grab tab on each end of the zipper tabs. So you're just going to center it and then clip it in place. And you'll have one on each end of the zipper. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and you'll top stitch the grab tab in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. When you put this under your presser foot, just make sure that your lining fabrics don't accidentally get folded. So make sure they stay wrong sides together with the foam. Take both of your base pieces and then you'll also need your project. Flip over the exterior base and we're going to start by measuring in 5 eighths of an inch from each of the long edges. And this will help us when we go to sew. So just mark a line at 5 eighths inch in from one long edge and the opposite long edge and I'm going to mark them on the opposite end as well. Then you're going to take your lining base with the right side up and you're going to place it against the right side of the lining. So you're going to have the lining sides right sides together and you're going to line up that short edge with the short edge of your project and the side edges should not go beyond the side edges of the project. Then you're going to take your exterior piece and place it right sides together with your exterior fabric and line up that short edge again and then just clip it in place. So then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to start sewing at that 5 eighths mark and then you're going to continue sewing and stop sewing at the opposite 5 eighths mark. So there's going to be 5 eighths of an inch on each end that is unsewn. And this will help for a later step. So we're going to use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, start and stop at those marks. Now you're going to take your scissors and trim away just the foam from the seam allowance to help reduce some of the bulk. Then you're going to fold away both of the bases. And 
and we're going to mark 5 eighths in from each of the side edges again. Then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to top stitch with a quarter inch seam starting and stopping at those marks. Now we're going to repeat the exact same steps to attach the opposite raw edges of both of the base pieces to the opposite edge of the main panels. So you're going to take the exterior base and place it right sides together with the exterior. And you're going to take the lining base piece and place it right sides together with the lining. So here's what it'll look like on the lining side. And you're going to clip all those layers together. So we kind of created a tube. It looks a little strange right now, but it'll make sense. So as long as you have your base pieces, your base piece right sides together with the main and your lining piece right sides together with the lining, and then you're going to repeat your stitching, you're going to sit, stitch with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance starting and stopping at those marks. Then you want to trim away some of the foam from the seam allowance. And then we're going to turn our project right side out. This is what it should look like so far. You just created a tube and your base pieces should be wrong sides together now. So now we just need to do the top stitching on this opposite side here. So we'll mark the 5 8 inches in from each side edge and it might be easier to do the top stitching for this step if you unzip the zipper all the way. And that'll just make your project a little bit more flexible and you'll be able to get this underneath your needle a little bit easier. We are on the last section of instructions and almost done with our mason bag. So the first step is to mark the bottom center of both of the exterior and the lining pieces. So simply just fold it in half and then mark where the center is and repeat for the bottom edge of the rest of the pieces. And you'll also mark the bottom center of the base on both sides and both the lining and the exterior pieces. Then you're going to turn the bag so the lining side is face out. And fold the lining so it goes inside the zipper opening. That way it will stay out of the way for this next step. And you can fold in these side edges as well. So just tuck everything into the middle to try to keep it out of the way. Then you're going to match that bottom center with the bottom center of the base and you'll want to move away that lining fabric too. So match your center points on one side and add a sewing clip. And then you're going to match up the side edges and then also the rest of the bottom edge and then ease in the corners and clip those. So the more clips the better. It will help compress the foam and help prevent your fabrics from shifting. 
So this is what it should look like so far. So we have one side clipped and now we'll go ahead and clip the other side as well. So make sure the lining stays tucked in and away. Now here's what our bag looks like with both of the sides clipped. And just make sure that your lining stays out of the way. You're going to take this over to your sewing machine and sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance around the exterior sides that are clipped. So you're going to sew, <clears throat> and I recommend to sew with the flat side against the bed of the machine like this, so you'll sew this side first, come around the corner, and don't be afraid to press the rest of the bag out of the way. Keep that lining out of the way, and take your time going around the corners to make sure that you catch all the layers of the fabric. So here's what your project should look like with both of the exterior pieces sewn. And now we're going to sew the lining pieces together. It's going to be the exact same process. So just fold away the lining. Take it out from inside. So we want to attach this side of the lining to the matching raw edge here. So we need to place it right sides together. So if you fold it over the top edge and press down all of this inside piece, we're going to match up the raw edges that were next to each other before. I'm going to put, up a, put a pin in the center mark so you'll notice we're matching those coordinating raw edges. So it's the same piece of fabric, lining fabric, that we're attaching. So you're going to have to squish down all of this inside piece and it's easier if you have the zipper unzipped. That gives you a little bit more flexibility. And for this part I'm using pins to make sure that everything stays in place. But like I said, don't be afraid to squish your bag and tuck your foam inside because it will pop right back into shape after we sew and turn it right side out. So here's what it should look like all pinned. And again, you're going to sew with this flatter side against the bed of the machine. And if you start in this upper corner here, you can just move all of the fabric out of the way and just make sure that your zipper is out of the way and you can kind of feel to make sure that you're just sewing through the two layers of fabric. And you'll just continue moving the bag out of the way as you sew. It'll get a little tight around the bottom corners, so I suggest using a zipper foot or a narrow foot to help you maintain your seam allowance. And for sewing the lining, we'll want to increase our seam allowance from what we did before. So for the exterior, we used a quarter inch seam allowance. For the lining, we want to increase to three eighths or even a half inch seam allowance if your machine will allow. If it's a little bit too challenging, you can just do 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. But by increasing the seam allowance in the lining, the lining will be just a little bit smaller and it'll fit better inside the bag. So I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance on the lining. We're going to start sewing just the one side of our lining. Leave a 5 inch turning opening on the bottom edge. So I would leave about 4 or 5 inches unsewn along that bottom straight edge and we'll use that opening to turn right side out so we can sew the opposite side of the lining. So 
So I forgot to leave a turning opening in the bottom edge, so I went back and I backstitched in two spots so that way I can seam rip this part and when we turn the bag right side out, we don't have to worry about the stitches ripping out more beyond that point. So I'm just going to take out a few stitches. So then you'll just want to double check around the corners and the sides to make sure that you caught both layers of the lining. And then you can take a scissors and trim the seam allowance back to a quarter of an inch. And just trim on the sides and the corners, leave the bottom. That will help for when we sew that turning hole closed. So now we can turn this portion of the bag right side out. So now we have the right side of the lining out. And as you can see, here's our first side that we've sewn. And again, just double check that you caught both layers. And you can either hand sew or top stitch this turning opening closed. One tip is if you fold the base away and kind of poke those corners out, you can put this back under your machine and start and stop sewing where you left off to close up that turning hole. So I just sewed that turning opening closed and now I'm going to fold the base of the lining back into place. So now we have to sew the opposite side of the lining. So it'll be the same process as before, so you're going to take that lining piece and fold it over the top edge. You can fold this top part in and tuck it down and try to get this side as flat as you can. Then you'll match those bottom center marks and pin in place and repeat the same steps just as before. I've already went ahead and trimmed the seam allowance on the sides and the corners, so now we're ready to turn it right side out. So one last step is to sew this turning hole closed. So like I said before, you can fold in those edges and you can hand sew or take this over to your sewing machine and just top stitch that turning opening closed. And once you do that, you can turn it fully right side out. Make sure you poke out the corners. And then just zip up the zipper. And your mason bag is ready to use. I would love to see your completed project. Be sure to share your pictures and tag Sally Tomato on social media.